Okay. Hello, everyone. I welcome you all to the financial reporting research batch of June 2024. This is the orientation session. So I will run you through what you can expect out of the research batch. Okay. Now, unfortunately, I believe that you all have probably not been able to make it in the previous session. Most of you all, I can already see the cases where you're losing just because of a one mark or a two mark, right? So, or sometimes even the gap is bigger, but most of the time I know that the gap is quite small. It's playing something between a 10 mark range. It's mostly you have lost it because of a 10 mark range. And in that the most common is a 48 or a 49 fail. Unfortunately, that's the biggest pinch. But anyway, how do we turn this fail into a pass? So there are very small but very important things that you all will have to remember right from your preparation stage. That is from day tomorrow itself, you all will have to be careful about certain things so that this time, so that this time, you all do not, you know, unfortunately, uh, happen to repeat one more quarter with FR. Okay. Now, before I begin the session, before I begin the content of the session, what I would want from you all is a quick confirmation as to I'm audible and I'm visible and my screen should also be visible. So three things should all be cool. And that's when you all will type a okay or a yes. Okay. I'm audible, I'm visible and the screen is also visible. Am I audible guys or not? Yes or no is what I'm looking in the chat box. <clears throat> yeah, perfect. Thanks. And by the way, this is a FR reset orientation session, I'm sure because of the wrong slide flashed, uh, there was some confusion, but this is our FR orientation session. So I hope the confusion is over now. Anyway, let's begin before I dive into the content, a quick background about myself. Of course, it's important for you all to know who I am. So yes, uh, you all already probably know my name, at least that I am Aisha Fessel. I am a ECCA member and a CPA member myself. Uh, I would just give you a little background uh, as to how I attained uh, the CPA Canada membership. So after attaining my ECCA membership, ACCA, the UK body and CPA had a memorandum, had an MRA between them, okay? uh, had an agreement between them because, which, because of which I had to do some modules of CPA Canada and I was able to, able to avail the certification. I didn't do the difficult examinations of CPA. I just did some very short, tiny modules, okay? Of course, I pay the annual membership fee and everything. I pay the, uh, you know, registration fee. I, I did all of that. But in terms of exams, like how we slog for ACC studies, that's not the kind of slogging I had to do for CPA, okay? So the why why do I mention this is because so many of you all are enrolled and you all probably don't know that ACC and always there'll be MREs with some other countries where you all will be able to take the benefit like how I did. Unfortunately, right now, as far as I remember the latest news, the CPA Canada membership, uh, you know, partnership is over. I was probably the last student to avail it or the last member to avail it, I would say. Literally, like the deadline date and I applied for it, okay? So, I don't know after that, mostly for good, quite a while, they did not renew it. Uh, and right now, what I'm aware is it's still in continuation with Singapore. So, you can become a Singapore uh, CM. You can become a UAE CA. And you will have to always, you know, check some material on ACCA global page to understand what more MRAs are there. Okay, so this is this is one good thing, one beauty of ACCA. Now, other than this, coming back to my background, where do I stand? So, from teaching perspective, I have 10 years of teaching experience. I've uh, been in the teaching industry uh, since, you know, since probably I graduated, I've entered into the teaching industry. And... Uh, Specifically, ACC teaching again. I've been fortunate to be a ACC for I would say more than five years, of course. And in this span of five years, I've taught more than three thousand students. I believe the count is even much more higher. I'll have to do exact count. Is three thousand count is you know probably last two last quarters count. And after that, again, I've taught few hundred students. So yes, more than three thousand students taught in this long journey. In terms of my work exposure, I am an analyst. I was rather an analyst at one of the top CA firms in India. Um, and currently, I am a senior analyst at KPN. Okay? And I believe uh, that most of us in, the, in this field, in this field of ATCA membership or be it any CA membership, we all try to target the big four somehow. Uh, not necessarily that it's everyone's dream. Uh, but I can see that most of us, uh, us dream of, you know, uh, big force. Uh, but I would trust, trust me, I would say one thing that 
if I've been able to get into Big Four, any one of you sitting right now or watching this lecture for sure can, okay? Because my journey has been a really, you know, I would say haywire towards, uh, you know, getting the corporate ladder and entering the big four. It's not a typical or a regular journey where you get graduated, you, you know, you do your membership along with it and then you enter into the big fours because, you know, you have cracked some good internships and after that you will land. Up. It's not a, you know, regular uh, uh, journey. Uh, it's a, you know, I, I, I have... Um, after finishing my graduation, I have done my uh, bachelor's in education. I have they've taken a three-year break. Then I started ACCA. So imagine so many years after graduation is when I've started ACCA. And uh, even after starting such a late career in ACCA, if I was able to crack a job in Big Four, and most of you, I can see at the student level, you all have entered into this, you know, studies. So for sure, if you dream of it, now, it's not just big four, right? You could dream of anything uh, in terms of a, you know, corporate achievement. It could be anything. I'm sure you can achieve it. Okay, I'm sure. This is why I tell my story that if I've started something late and achieved it, uh, you know, achieve this now, I'm sure everyone can. Okay. Now, next thing, coming uh, coming to the point, okay, coming to the point, uh, why do we have this session? Because I would want to help your fail turn into a pass. Of course, if you're joining my recent session, during the course, you have so much material and, you know, so much of guidance and counseling and everything to pass. But I believe some of your, some of y'all are here who are probably watching this right now in the session or later going to watch it on YouTube are going to do self-study also. So you can still make use of all this that I'm telling you right now. Okay, you Either you're joining my course or you're not joining my course, you can for sure make use of this, okay? And trust me, even if you are not a FR student, but any other, stu any other paper in ACC or right now enrolled, this information is, I would say, common to all the papers. These are all, you know, wise do's and don'ts that you should you should you should be avoiding, right? And there is some information in it which most of you all are not aware of, or most of the professors I would be are uh, I believe are not aware of. Uh, the you know way ACCA functions, way ACCA orbits, the way ACCA, uh, you know. Uh, body or the ACC marking teams marks you or what they expect out of you. Not many professors share this. Probably it's unawareness. Uh, but I've been lucky that I had some good mentors. I had some excellent tutors because of which I had that inside knowledge of ACC bodies because of which I have some information which probably I can pass it to you. And now you can make use of it. Okay. So the mistakes that you all do, common mistakes in preparation. So one thing, that pen and paper time is over. If still anyone is practicing using a pen and paper, understand that your exam is on a lap. Uh, your exam is on a PC. It's on a virtual screen. Now, even though you have a lot of knowledge around the subject, you're excellent with it. But if you've not used that platform where the exam is going to be, then of course the knowledge is not just sufficient. You might end up failing if you don't practice on the platform. Now, CVEPTs is the platform given by ACCA. I'll show you how to go to that platform. It's given by ACCA where you have that real look and feel of the exam. So how the spreadsheet. So when you do your uh, sums like consolidation and single entity, how the spreadsheet is going to be is there on that CVEPT platform. See, we have Microsoft Excel. We drill questions on Microsoft Excel. That's perfect. We should be doing that. It's okay. But even a better version of Microsoft Excel is a CVEPT platform because that's more like your exam. Okay, everything that is available on Excel, Microsoft Excel is not available on the exam date. But CVEPD platform will then let you know whatever functions you're using here will be available on the exam or not available, right? So the best way is to drill your section C type questions, your ratio, your uh, consolidation, your single entity preparation on CVEPD platform. It's like telling a child that, you know what, you learn your A to Zs, A, B, C, D, and you have a written test on it. But the child has always just been reading A to Zs and doesn't know how to write it. And now you give him a pen and paper and you're telling, you know what, write and show me on the exam day. Of course, even if the child has the knowledge, the child will not be able to perform, right? So yes, don't do this mistake to yourself, with yourself. Now, not doing study hub questions. Yes, there was a time when we would do Kaplan questions, BPP questions. Even if you're doing them, it's, it's fine. But there is a much better version of your Kaplan and BPP now. We have Study Hub. ACC body has developed their own resources, their own study material, which is absolutely free for the students. You need your student ID and password to enter into it. So it's absolutely free for the students. Now, whatever theory content is in there, the question material is in there, 
the exam questions are mostly going to come from it because that's the same body which is preparing it and the same body is giving exam. So instead of relying on a publisher like BPP and Kaplan, the best place is to go to Study Hub. One, because it's more close to your exam. Second, it's absolutely free. Now, students, my students from last two, three quarters have been studying questions from Study Hub and have done the paper versus the ones who have done BPP and Kaplan. They come and immediately give me the verdict that, you know what, we finished the paper in, say, about two and a half hours or two hours. And this is, trust me, first time in history that a three-hour FR paper, students are coming and telling us that, you know what, we finished it in two and a half hours. Never it is that any student has extra time. Never. They are always short of time. They're always finishing it on nick of the time. But they never that they finish the paper 30 minutes early. This is only because of study of familiarity or the closeness to the exam style questions. The surprise elements is elevated. The surprise element is ele elevated or eliminated, I would say. Okay. Now, once you're done with all the all the study hub questions thoroughly, like a good two times. If you've done all these questions two times for every chapter, is when you can go for extra material to a Kaplan or BPP. This is for those who are looking to rank. Then you, you go and practice every question available in the market. But those who are just looking to pass, stick to study hub. Just looking to pass, stick to study hub. Okay. Oh, okay. So I have a comment. Uh, that I am a little fast. Okay, I'll speak slow. That's not a problem. I'll speak slow. I have so much to tell you also, you know, I, I feel like, you know, I have to finish all of this in one hour. I'll speak a little slow. <clears throat> the third problem is not covering the whole syllabus. You all are cherry picking material, thinking that certain areas could be dropped because they are maybe not important. You might drop IS-38 intangible. You might drop your IFRS 59 NCHFS thinking maybe it's not important, but that's not the case. You know, multiple sets are distributed in the exam hall. Okay, distributed meaning flashed on your screen. Now, any paper will get dominated by a particular standard. So, good 15 mark can be just around one standard. It could be one of the smallest standard that you think, the least important one that you think. And if it gets dominated, then high chances you might fail if you have not touched that chapter, right? So, not covering the whole syllabus is a problem. Okay. No plan to use time wisely. This is also one of the major problems that you all are not having a plan in place. So if you fail or you have not failed, whatever is the case, you should have a plan from day one till the exam date. So if you don't have a plan today, you have to draw one from tomorrow, from tomorrow in your exam day that how are you going to go about it? How are you going to go about it? That is, I would say from 20th April till your exam date, draw a plan not just that every day what you're going to do but you have to have a uh, you know a goal oriented plan that okay you know what i want to finish a consolidation by so and so date i want to finish a single entity by so and so date i wouldn't want to give consolidation more than 10 days i wouldn't want to give single entity more than 5 days so that's how you will chalk out a plan and if you are struggling to draw a personal plan for yourself don't worry i have devised a plan for you a 40 day plan Okay, so in this session only, I'm going to flash it and explain how you could go about it. Um, you could tweak it by your, by you know, the way you want it. Uh, but uh, yeah, idea is you should have a 40 day plan today. Okay? If you don't have a plan today, how are you going to act on it? You're, you can't just uh, work aimlessly, right? You should know where you're moving towards, where you're directed towards. Next not having access to keynotes for quick revision all the time not having access to keynotes very important now what you all are doing is when you all are watching the lectures when you all are watching the lectures um you all are probably not preparing notes uh, or even if you're doing if you're a self study student when you're browsing or studying the lecture uh, your your uh, chapter you're not preparing your notes and then in that case, you all are not even having any trigger points or key points for your notes. So if you're my student, then when you're watching the lecture, uh, you could have probably prepared some trigger points. But the good part is that in my course, you don't even have to prepare that because I'm already giving you the trigger points. Now, what I mean, see, for example, revenue is a good long chapter, okay, 10 pages or whatever. Now, once you watch that lecture, it's a two and a half, three hour lecture or four hour lecture, I would say. Uh, you watch the lecture for four hours. Uh, you have the knowledge of fresh day one, day two, 20% lost. 
day three, 40% loss, one week after 90% loss and 10% is only what you remember. So four hours you gave of your life, of your quarter, and unfortunately, you wouldn't remember anything of it. So that's really bad. Okay, that's worst thing. That's not a good thing that you're doing to yourself. Time is precious. So what you could do is you would retain or you would want to of course retain all that study till exam day. How do you retain it? What is the smart, smartest and the best way possible? What you will prepare for yourself are notes. So of course notes. But again, when you prepare notes on your 10 or 15 page of content of study text, you could, you could prepare a notes of four to five pages. Again, the you would lack the motivation to revise of those four to five pages on a daily basis to retain it or even alternate basis, right? So you should prepare just trigger points or a bird eye view of that chapter, which is just on one page. So what you have to do is just glance through it every day for a two minute, right? Just quickly read the points, read the points, read the points, and then move to the next, chap next chapter, two minutes, read the points. Like that, if you're devoting of your life, um, uh, I would say good 15 minutes of your life every day to read all the chapters, I don't think it's a pinch, right? I don't think it's a pinch. The best part is it gets engraved in your memory and it's not a waste of knowledge. We are not learning some historical dates where we think it's not important. This is something you're going to use in SBR. This is something you're going to highly use in real life. These standards knowledge you're highly going to use in your corporate world. So even if it, get, it gets engraved in your head, let, let, let them enter it. Give them you know the space in your brain. Let them enter it. It's okay. You're going to use it. So yes, these are some mistakes that you'll make in preparation, which I would say for sure avoid. Okay. Uh, I would want to flash what keynotes I'm talking about. So this is my IFRS 15. And in IFRS 15, there are way too many scenarios coming up. So all those scenarios are at an FR level, I've put on one sheet. You want, you can take a screenshot of this right now. Uh, it's okay, completely okay. Uh, but like this, I have prepared for all the chapters, which you could make use of. Okay. Now, one thing, when I said study hub questions, your section A and section B questions of the single chapter. So when you do a single chapter, you will practice a section A question, all the section A questions from study hub and the available study uh, section B questions from the study hub. Section C questions, guys. Section C questions is something you will only be able to practice if you've done a decent chunk, which means for consolidation, if you've drilled TL, all the content of it, you will be able to do it. Balance sheet, again, if you've drilled all the adjustments, all the content, then you'll be able to do it. Single entity, good five chapters at least you need to do when you can drill that one single entity question. Ratio also, a lot of material to be understood. But ratio, I think it's very possible to even start from day one. Okay, But at least for consolidation and single entity, it's not that easy, right? One second. Yeah. So anyway, the idea is that uh, you don't have the time or the bandwidth to practice all the past questions that's available out there, right? There are probably like good 50 questions, even if you open the Kaplan book right now or a BPP book right now, the number of questions would be enormous. Uh, and we don't have that kind of bandwidth, at, at least at the point where we are standing right now. We came to know if we have not made it in the exam. Right now, we just have 40 days in the hand. We don't have that much bandwidth to crack 60 questions, which means almost cracking one and a half sections E-type every day. That's not possible. So what we will do is we will focus on the most important questions, on the most important questions. And how do you go about this? What you can do is, you can come to your study hub and in your study hub, you, on the left-hand side, you have these practice questions, right? Once you enter your study hub, ACC study hub, please go to the link, click it, put in your student ID, register, uh, you know, whatever student ID, password, click FR financial reporting, come to practice side, okay? In practice side, they have segregated section C questions for you. Come at the bottom. And you will see section C constructive response revision questions. Okay. We have one, two, three. We have about nine questions in single entity. You have about five, five in position and piano. So that's 10 here. So 10 and 9, 19. Okay. And three, six, seven. Okay, nine, so that's about roughly 26 questions. 
So instead of doing again your BPP and Kaplan like sixty questions, instead just do these twenty six questions. They are a flavor from all the all the place, right? Balance sheet five, PL five, single entity nine, ratios six, unique questions. So instead of targeting that, target these. And once you're done with one round of the, these questions, do it the second time. Do it the second time. So don't pick up fresh questions, but do the same questions. I would say two times. Okay. Those who are looking to rank, once you're done with the two rounds of these questions, then you take extra money. Okay. Then you take extra money. Now, what I have done is, of course, on my uh, in my course, I have tried to pre-record quite few many section C type questions. Right now, already on the platform, you can see this list of twenty marker questions. They are consolidation of balance sheet. We have consolidation of PNL. We have single entity questions. We have ratio questions. Okay, so I have already one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, thirteen questions. I have okay, and this key list keeps on increasing every time because every week we have a session almost of FR. So, like tonight, we have a session on FR. So, just in case if you enrolled tonight, also we have a session in which I'm going to drill two consolidation of panel questions. So, this list will keep increasing only. This list will keep increasing. Okay. Eventually, I'm targeting that whatever is available on our at least uh, ACC study hub, all those questions I want to make available. And not just that, there are some extra questions also done. That's extra practice. That's extra practice. Okay. So, if you're doing self study, make make. Make it a point that you're doing these study hub questions. If you're not doing self study, if you're enrolling the course, then you can watch my le lecture and parallelly do your practices, right? So this is one thing. <coughs> Mistakes done during the exam. So I would want to let you all know about, about the thing, the key point which you all do on the exam date, and because of which you all end up, yeah, because of which you all end up, uh, you know, losing. The paper because of two, three, four marginal marks. Okay, so one thing y'all are doing is y'all are not attempting the whole paper. Whole paper not attempted. Whole paper not attempted. What's the problem with this? Now understand that you have a hundred mark paper at ha hand, and if you do the entire hundred marks, so if you attempt entire hundred mark or a hundred mark, there is a comment on the script that you will get that it's a fully attempted script. Now, always understand that a fully attempted script will have a better chance of passing compared to an incomplete script. So you would want to attain this one. Okay? You would want to attain this one. So always attempt the whole paper. Second, leaving questions in leaving questions in continuity. Okay. So before I discuss this point, just one other point I want to discuss, uh, which is fifth. Okay, so this I should have done it in continuity anyway. So uh, not leaving the paper incomplete as a problem, but second, the other major problem is also over time invested in sub questions. See, just because I said that you know what you have to complete the whole paper, it doesn't mean that you sit with an MCQ for good ten minutes or with a sub question, a five mark sub question and single entity for another like half an hour or whatever. You can't do that. You can't afford that. Don't forget your aim. Your aim. You have invested a quarter of your life, three months of your life. You've invested some money uh, in this course. The aim for this quarter, for this exam, particular pa paper or the sheet that you have in front of you, is to crack, is to crack, okay, that paper. Rather than acing any sub-question, rather than acing a sub-question, you're not going to come out of the exam hall and tell your parents or tell your friends that you did, did the best 10th MCQ, like the 10th MCQ, whatever was there, you did the best answer to that. That's not your aim. Who did the best sub question for single entity? The, the best answer is what you have wrote out of the whole batch. But again, that's not the aim. The aim is to pass the paper. So don't sit and over invest time trying to you know recall, recall, recall. Of course, you have to give a fair attempt, a fair chance, but you can't over invest time. If you think you're not able to recall, you have to then just write the best possible thing that you can connect it with, the best possible standard that you can connect it with there, the best possible thing that you can write in, a, in, in that short time and move from there and move from there. Remember, you just have 1.8 minute per mark. Okay, 1.8 minute per mark. Time yourself. Don't exceed that time limit. Again, do justice to yourself. Remember the aim is to pass. Don't waste your money. Don't waste your time. <clears throat> Second, Leaving questions in continuity. What do I mean by this? I'm talking about the OFR rule you're mainly. 
Now, OFR rule is a rule probably you all are not aware of, uh, but it's a very important rule. Anyway, so what happens is, guys, say, for example, you have a question number 31, which is on single entity, and it's preparation of PNL question. So you've prepared a PNL, you have revenue, you have cost of sales, and so forth. After that, so this is question number 31, first requirement. Second requirement is a EPS requirement. Okay, And in EPS, we all know our numerator is profit for the year and our denominator is the number of shares. Right? Depending upon the complexity of the situation, this ratio might tweak a little bit, weighted average or whatever we take. Okay? Idea is it's a profit for the year figure. Now, this is one figure which is getting carried forward, meaning... From your PNL, it's been taken to your second solution. Now you might, by just looking at the question, suppose your PNL is a 15 mark requirement and your EPS is a five mark requirement. You might, by just looking at the question, say, you know what? I am really good with the PNL. I'll do the PNL and I'll completely leave EPS because I uh, am sure that the pro uh, the, the PNL figure is not going to be 100% correct. For sure, there are unique adjustments. You all will come across unique and tough adjustments. So for sure, there must be some mistake that I have done. If I've done some mistake, say, for example, you need to get, a, say, six. You need to have 13 million as answer. Uh, but suppose you have got 12.5 million. You're close, but you have, of course, made, you have not got all adjustments correct, right? So even if there is a minor mistake, your answer is not going to match with the examiner's sheet. As a result, a wrong 12.5 million numerator is being taken ahead. Now, of course, if it's a wrong numerator out here, then whatever is the correct information as per number of shares or anything else, uh, you will not get an EPS which matches the examiner's answer script. It will not match with the examiner's answer script. So using this lo logic, you might be like, why do I waste my time? I'm not going to get that five mark anyway. So let's completely leave this question. Let's completely leave this requirement. That's one of the biggest mistakes you're doing. Why? Even if this is 12.5, even if this is not matching with 13 million, let your answer be really far away from 13 million. Let it be something like 2 million. Okay, let it be just some absurd figure. Even if your PNL cost of sales and all the total is something else, but when you add up on your calculator, some other figure only. Okay, even that is not matching. But if you show the examiner that it is this profit for the year figure which you're carrying forward to the EPS and everything else in this EPS question being correct, you will get a full five on five. You will get a full five on five. He will not even cut a single mark, though nothing matches with the examiner's answer script. In terms of number crunching, nothing matches with the answer script still you'll get a full five on five. You know why? Because your what knowledge is testing is just testing whether you know the EPS rules, whether you understand that weighted average was to be applied and the weighted average concept has been correctly applied, whether you understand that the formula was profit for the year and the weighted average number of shares denominator. He will check that and he will not penalize you for the same mistakes again and again. Now, why you don't have a correct total is probably because you have made mistaken some adjustments. You already lost mark. Out of this 15 mark, you already probably scored a 10 mark here. So already marks lost in the first question. Again, he will not penalize you for that. This is the beauty of ACP, the OFR rule. It's called, if I have to expand this, this is called the own figure rule. So literally while checking your paper, if the examiner is giving you 5 on 5, he'll write over your OFR. On basis of what? On basis of OFR he's given. So I hope that's clear with everyone. Now, third, not showing breakup of ratio solution. Again, another common mistake you are doing. Um, but it's important to show the ratio. If you just give an end figure of ratio to the examiner, and if it doesn't match slightly also with his script, he will give you a wrong. So you'll get a zero mark out of one. But if you show the numerator and denominator, then he'll be able to at least give you half mark for numerator because it's correct, half mark for denominator because it's correct, whatever is correct, he'll be able to give you that. Second, your OFR will also apply there. 
your OFR rule will also apply there. What do I mean? I'll quickly show you all what it means. It's very important for uh, ratios. Expand. Okay, so for example, you have calculated uh, GP margin. Uh, which is, you all know, your GP upon revenue into 100. And you have calculated operating margin, which again, you know, is your operating profit upon revenue into 100. You have calculated ROC. Okay. Which, or let's take not ROC, net asset term. Net asset term. That's revenue, right? Yeah. So we have net asset turnover. So you have your revenue upon ROC. So you can see three times, three times the revenue is getting repeated. Okay. And what happens in our ACC paper, life is not always simple. It's not that maybe revenue will be a straightforward figure. Maybe you have to do some adjustments and get that revenue. Now, if you're doing those adjustments and getting the revenue figure, then maybe your answer is correct as a revenue and maybe it's wrong. But if you're letting the examiner know that that's your revenue figure and you're expanding the GP formula and he can see the numerator and denominator separately, he'll understand, okay, it's the same revenue, wrong figure that you've calculated and taken it away. So even if this is wrong, even if this is wrong, he'll be able to give you full one mark away. Okay. Forget it. If it's not a carried forward adjustment figure. You simply made a silly mistake. You simply copied it wrong. You simply copied it wrong or you saw... Uh, uh, another line item and you've been assuming that's a revenue line item. So you copied it wrong. So, okay, at least what will happen is, guys, at least what will happen is you'll get a half mark for GP. You'll get a zero mark for revenue. Understandable. So you got a half mark for this ratio. Second ratio. He can see the same wrong revenues being carried forward. So he'll not cut your marks again. So he'll give you one mark. Third time also, he can see the same wrong revenue being carried forward. So again, he'll give you another full one. So you'll get a two and a half mark out of three mark instead of getting a zero mark out of three mark. So this is the power of expanding. Same mistake you have done. It's just you have expanded the formula and show. So once the examiner can see what you have done, he'll be able to give you a two and a half mark instead of a zero mark. So ratio, interpretation question, whatever rules I give you, whatever knowledge I'm giving you around ratios is very crucial to follow. Trust me, I have a student who tried to follow exactly what I had told her and sort of get a breakup. Or analysis of your paper that in constructed response question number 31 the interpretation how did you do how much mark did you get in that specific question in 32 in your consolidation how much did you get so she got her feedback which is very recent i think yesterday or today um, and she scored 77 out of 100 okay and I asked her what kind of uh, practice uh, 77 percentage is what i 77 percentage or uh, yeah, 77 percentage for that specific ratio question. And ratio students struggle a lot with. They struggle for interpretation purposes. I would say her first language is not even English. Okay. So how did she do? Did she practice a lot? Did she practice like 25 questions on ratios and everything? No, nothing of that sort. She just targeted some six questions. She did it good two to three times those six questions. She followed the rules that I set for ratios, like expanding the formulas and how to crack certain scenarios. There are some tips and tricks that I teach during ratio chapter, right? So she followed that and she was able to attain this. Okay, And I can see that she, uh, it's not that, uh, you know, like I said, English is the first language. I don't believe English is the first language. So still she attained this. So stick to the rules or the concepts of ratios, please. Next. Not doing appropriate commenting. You'll end up repeating comments. You'll end up repeating comments like if something you're writing in GP margin that the raw material purchase was expensive compared to last year's while GP margin has dropped. Now, of course, that will have some impact on operating also. GP's impact will come to operating margin also and operating will drop because of that also. So if you write the same reason for operating, then what will examiner do? He will write a zero over there and he'll write PAG, previously awarded grade. For same thing, he'll not give you a mark again. The way they are lenient with OFR doesn't mean they're, you know, distributing marks for free. So if you just write same things, they just write a PAG. They won't give you a mark. So what are you to do? You are to make sure that you're not repeating comments and you're giving quality points. 
that one mark one point concept is one mark one quality point just don't write rubbish just don't write same things again and again both four marks okay over time that's something i discussed the last thing that i want to discuss with you all is panicking for unique adjustments remember that if you've been sincere in your course for you know doing the practice there's no point of panicking for sure how much ever you practice in your exam date you're going to come across a situation or a question which is going to be difficult which is going to go above your head it's going to blow your brains and you'll be like what i didn't do this you know i didn't come across this in the course there is going to be some surprise element okay and that surprise element is designed for the rankers a 10 mark 12 mark chunk is designed for the rankers you can see in the class not everyone is getting 90 above right not everyone is getting 90 above so those 10 marks are designed in such a manner that only people who have you know gone that extra mile have done things which are necessary to rank you know practice that kind of material you know look beyond their books done so much research um the, those individuals will will be able to crack it okay so there is naturally in every paper not just acc pick up any course even from your high school times you all know that not everything is easy right there is some element which is designed to at a higher difficulty level so why panic every individual in the student hall is going to face that problem in fact when i also see that question i'm going to be taken aback that okay, you know what this is not something i saw earlier so instead of panicking again just relate that which standard it could get related be connected with do what are the requirements as per the standard whatever you are able to recall if it tends if it's 10% 20% 30% just attempt it see attempting attempting is important because you want that uh, you know comment fully attempted script so at least attempt it quickly and then move from there. and then move from there rather than panicking okay there are so many easy marks if you check your consolidation and single entity out of 5 to 6 adjustments 3 Repeat every year. There's so much. There will question already. What in there is nothing unique. It's a place where you can score and pass. Not unique adjustments. That's not your game. Unique adjustments are not is not our game. That's the game for very few students who are sitting in the class and you know are over prepared. Only for them. okay so this is it now what i want to share with you all is a 40 day plan so what you all can do is take a screenshot of this and of course you might not be comfortable with the order that i have so in that case you can have your own order of studying i'm just giving a suggestion from my side as to how you could go about in these 40 days okay so i tend to help my students gain control over consolidation at the start okay because consolidation is complicated if you touch it at the end you get panic you start panicking you get intimidated that what is this complicated topic and exam is in a week so two weeks time you know how to put your head around it. it it gets intimidating so i like my students to get to kill this difficult concept in the first first place itself okay in my regular batch right now we have been drilling consolidations for good 3 weeks now over and over and over and they are at a little comfortable space i would say not super but i would say they are at a little comfortable space by now they wouldn't panic now at least okay because every weekend we are even trying to uh, you know drill or practice the questions together take difficult adjustments around it together so over and over you know doing the same thing through three weeks uh, it just helps you get the confidence tonight also like i said we are going to do two sums around consolidation of pnl practice So anyway, uh, my suggestion would be uh, that if you are in my research course, very well, you already have the material, so you can focus on consolidation to start with. And how many questions to practice is also what is also something that I have written here. Okay, three questions around balance sheet you can do, three around PNL you can do, and three around associates you can do. Okay, sorry, I think I'm wrong. Let me type also. Yeah. So three around balance sheet, three around PNL, and three around associate. That way, you end up practicing nine questions of consolidation, so which is good enough. But practice it two times. Practice it two times instead of taking fresh questions. Practice nine question two times. Okay. Now this is this will help you by twenty seventh of April get control over your consolidation. By twenty seventh April get control over your consolidation. Just in case you are not a full time student, you are also working. 
you might have to allow yourself a little more time maybe but this plan also that i'm drawing is still very doable the day you watch the lecture i'm not asking you to practice a lot many questions just one question the other day i'm just asking you to practice two questions so even if you're working two questions if you squeeze your time like if you try to get up early try to sleep one hour late get up one hour early you know break in between or whatever you can manage two questions even if you're working in the show okay the one section b type for which i allocate one day it's trust me it's just a i would say half an hour game now you're not going to you know uh, not just practice anything else right so this is also buffer period for you if you've not been able to practice these three questions in three days time so you can use this slot you can practice it so it's very doable target nine questions two times one week very doable target you are doing this for the second time so it's even more achievable disposal of substrates just one session watch it and do all section a and b sums around it okay same same way for any topic guys whenever you watch like for example i 16 on the 29th if you have watched you will practice all the section a and b sums okay that's that's how you say okay i 16 is done just conceptually understanding i 16 means nothing because this is not a conceptual paper or, or a theory paper where you're doing things in theory okay you have to actually show it in number crunching form so if you don't practice it it's not making you it's not helping you. then on this 30th day you can practice these three standards together because they're tiny so it's very doable they're very tiny standards so it's doable you can do section a in some form uh, now after that so in by the way in your for, by your april end you've got control over consolidation and you have got control over your in non current assets as well like your Uh, you know investment property your property plan and equipment or things like these right so nca you have got control over in the first month like the end of april now may when may starts the first week of may you would target your single entity another 20 mark question okay you have got control over 120 mark topic by the sixth day you will try to get control over the single entity another 20 mark topic for that it's important that you finish these four chapters every day one by one one by one okay leases financial instruments taxation and revenue you know single entity one one adjustments from these chapters going to come okay one day i've kept a buffer day also so just in case after watching the lecture you're not able to practice section b a and b some sort of timely manner in the buffer day you can finish your uh, missed out lm then three days i've dedicated to single entity which makes it on which makes it nine sums very doable cash flow one full lump sum is enough and section a and b sums are important from cash flow one day again we have done a buffer day so out of single entity and cash flow whatever is missed you can finish it on the buffer day so understand by 10th of may again another 20 mark and cash flows 1% chance it could be a 20 mark so anyway by 10 you already have control over consolidation single entity and cash flows three huge topics now from 11th you will start interpretation ratios because it's a compulsory question 100% tested okay so it's very important to practice it seven questions you can practice around it one day again kept as buffer if you don't finish the deadline then after that all your small standards journey will start okay all small standards journey will start when whenever you do the topic you will practice a and b questions and three buffer days have been kept okay So yes, I would say just take the screenshot till twenty first, okay, or uh, or rather just take a screenshot till thirtieth, because I want you to have it as a thirty days plan. That in thirty days plan, you have complete control over the syllabus part. Okay, don't make a note after this. If you're taking a screenshot, make sure that till thirtieth, you have complete control over the syllabus. This is the plan for that. After that, your revision mock. grand revision debrief starts these dates could be plus minus here and there these dates are not exact dates because this this might change this is my revision week but roughly this is what how you, this is how your 40 day plan could look like now you could make it in more detail you could make it in less detail you could you know revamp this whatever it is you can take a screenshot right now and do the neat foot but you should have a concrete plan in your mind do the neat okay so i think this is it now uh, in terms of my plan one more thing that i want to share with you all is that how we work at wifi how do we teach so of course you all know that we are going to share recorded sessions 
you'll have live classes in the weekend where we practice together, where I take your doubts because I've given you so much practice questions. You all end up finding things difficult. So we do a weekend session in which you have doubts. Of course, you have e-notes and this my keynote or my USP is the cheat sheets, the one page notes. Okay, very important. Print it, stick it around your cupboard, stick it around the walls or take soft, keep the soft copies in your mobile phone. In, in WhatsApp, make a group with your own self and keep all cheat sheets there. So, you know, you're also used to going to the WhatsApp, right? So keep browsing through every morning, every night. Just keep having a look at these cheat sheets. Trust me, everything is going to get engraved. And this is how things are engraved in my head. For when I am teaching you all guys, I am not doing any hardcore learning before my uh, lecture and coming. It's only because every quarter I'm teaching it and I'm giving just one glance, it's engraved in my head. Every quarter, one glance and it's engraved in my head, right? So right now, before, before to, tonight's topic, I might just give a 15-minute look or 10-minute look at the topic. That's it. And because of that, it's still engraved for the next three months in my head. Imagine, the next three months or you can even say a year. I took a good six-month maternity break, break in between, but they're in my head. Why? Because that's every quarter I'm just reading it, just giving just few minutes of my life, like three or four minutes I'm just giving a glance. So, of course, imagine if you have 40 days in your hands and if two to three, three minutes if you're going, going to give to every standard, that's some next level power, okay? That's some next level power you'll be able to attain. Superpower, I would say. Anyway, we have a model called TTA model in which uh, you have assignments, you have test yourselves, you have tests. So this is how you will learn or pro make progress at VP. VP okay? You have a mock exam which gets checked by me, not any marking team, but by me. And I will mark with how the way how ACC body marks, like they Wherever necessary, they'll still give you marks basis OFRU. So I won't simply cut marks. Even I will adapt the mind of an ACCA, ACC individual who corrects the paper and basis that I'll give you. The PAG rule. There's also something called max rule. So all these rules, with these rules in my mind, I'll mark your paper. There'll be a grand revision date. The day. Uh, basically, this is a three-day uh, you know, marathon, I would say, in which... Two days, we will drill questions and questions and questions. Wrong two days, we'll drill questions as many as we can. One day, we will do recap of all standards. All standards. So, this is webinar come revision, uh, come grand revision. Okay. So, good three days. And I think out of this, two days are also going to be free. Two days, which are your webinar days in which we drill questions, are going to be free. The one day in which we drill uh, standards, I think that's not free. That's for our students only. Then performance tracking is done where our admin team will make an assessment as to how much you're watching, uh, you know, are you watching it in a timely manner? And this assessment will be released in our WhatsApp group. So you know where you're standing in terms of class. Have you attended 60% uh, of a particular session, 40% or 30%? How much have you watched? So you are comparative with other students. And second, what has your attendance been like? Okay. So all this, everything is also tracked through a gamification model at Wifi. But they score you. So if you're watching timely lectures, giving the assignments on time, all of that, you get points. You get points. And what's the point of these points? Uh, what's the point? So these points will help you get a discount percentage towards your next course. Okay. So whenever you enroll for the next course at Wifi, basis these points, you can avail a discount. So yes, this is it, guys, from my side. If you all have questions, feel free to ask. Before I end the session, please ask me as many questions you will have around this. So you can type it out. You can unmute your mic and ask. Don't be shy. Ruth, I hope uh, what I said was understandable. I'm sorry I was fast. But yeah, like I had the pressure to, you know, uh, give you all the knowledge uh, in one hour, right? So I had to, what you can do is, you know, Best, maybe, of course, once it's released on YouTube, I think that uh, you can do it fast, but I think you can do it slow also. And if you can do it slow, you can watch it at a slow speed as well. So, guys, any questions? Please, please feel free to ask. No questions. I believe everyone is good. Okay, I'm super happy. Anyway, if you all want to enroll for the reset batch, please contact the admin team as soon as possible. Okay, here are the numbers. You all can contact it, take a screenshot. And just in case if you've made your mind to enroll, if you've made your mind to enroll, 
then i might say that i might as well enroll now and if you're getting a chance to get access to tonight's session which is in one hour the fr live session where i drill two consolidation of pnl questions then you can take benefit of that as well right so just in case i'm not saying you know what you have to enroll if you're a self study student by all means self study but if you are enrolling then i'm saying take the decision quickly reason being you will be able to take benefit of the session in one hour if they do it that fast way okay so for master students how many exemptions you would get for sure i think the the knowledge level papers are exempted for you that there's the three papers but for master students other than the knowledge level paper how many more are exempted it's also i think country wise you know country wise which college you did all that matters a little bit so you will have to get in touch with the admin of wifi some knowledgeable person from admin of wifi will be able to guide you around this is a master in corporate finance for sure there are more subjects more than three subjects roughly i feel like five to six papers should be exempted five to six papers uh okay so if you've not watched consolidation of pnl then tonight's lecture might be a little difficult but see if you're not doing anything in life tonight if you're anyway free then might as well come and join my lecture of course you'll be able to benefit it's not going to go bonkers of course you'll be able to benefit so siban i think uh, university of law uk you still sure see uh, i'm sure that the basic number of exemptions are there with every college or every institute but then there are some top up exemptions also so whether your university is eligible for you know that top up exemptions or not some knowledgeable person from admin team contact the admin team get more details okay so i hope uh, you can contact me personally so what you can do dear is uh, you are if you part of the global group i'll share the link of global group i think you all should be on the global group already but just in case you all are not right i'm going to share the link on the page You, there you all can probably you know ask me anything that you all want to uh, any legit questions of course i'll be happy to cater there shouldn't be a problem i'm not reluctant to work contact me for global but of course i am not taking any one on one classes my classes exclusively are being taken at wifi only so you don't i mean don't contact me for any one on one classes that's not happening uh, but yeah for doubts and things like those yes if you are already part of the fr global link i mean global group guys you all can make a move you all can leave that's okay reason being uh, i'm just sharing that and after that there's no nothing to the agenda anymore so if you are already part of this you all don't have to waste your time thank you and just you all can give me a quick feedback as to how did you like the session were you able to take advantage of it if you could put it in the comment box it would be great i'll be highly motivated okay i think i almost got the link yeah i'm putting it in the chat box so you can join the global group there are students like you all uh, who are there in the group trying to study and exchange material the link is out there please join the groups the next session um if you're a student siban already then the links are there already on the wifi portal right so you can always join for the live session there's a there's a tab for live session so links are already in there but if you are not a student then i'm sorry um just for the students right the live sessions if you want to attempt the exams what paper do you do can you advise to start with please okay so siban if you're exempted of the knowledge level then from skill level it's for sure financial reporting i'll suggest to start to start with the reason being financial reporting uh, difficulty level is on the lower side so if you take a difficult paper to start with only you are very uh, demotivated right and there is a very high chance to drop acc midway if you take level 1 level 2 level 3 weighted you progressing take that in the photo and then you could probably take because that's one technical you would want you could go for a theory double a audit after that or you could go for uh, fm financial management that's also one good paper after that yeah i think sabana i answered that right the study plan is not uploaded on the site as yet uh 
Um, okay, I'm going to check with the team why that is not the case. Okay. So, Sivan, if you're not a student and if you're looking forward to enroll, then by all means, please contact the admin team so that you can become part of the paid group as well. No problem. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good day.